High range playing is really important. And it's also a topic that a lot of trombonists have a lot of questions about. Maybe this will help dismiss some of the mystery for you. One of the most important things to understand about high range playing is that it's not about strength, but actually it's about focus. When we dissect trombone playing in the high register, we come to three different pieces that all work together. The first is your tongue placement. Inside your mouth, when you play high, the back of your tongue comes up a little bit. You can feel what this feels like if you whistle and just let the pitch raise. You'll feel the back of your tongue raising. That allows the air in your mouth to move faster. Now, air, the second aspect of high range playing, is another place where we have to debunk a few mysteries. A lot of people talk about the idea that high range playing requires more air. That's not actually true, but it does require faster air. And it also requires that the air be moving constantly. It is true that in the high range, there's less margin of error for your air to be consi consistently supporting your playing. In order to work on high range and air, we do a lot of different exercises to keep the air moving. However, when we use too much air in high range, the note can break apart. And this is exactly like taking a garden hose with water flowing and plugging the end. The water goes faster. But if you were to turn the spout all the way up, eventually your thumb would blow off because there'd be too much pressure. That's exactly what happens to our embouchure when we're in the high range. Now, your embouchure, the third part of high range playing, is where a lot of the strength mystery comes into play. Instead of thinking about strength, we're gonna think about focus, particularly for the aperture, which is where the buzz happens. As we ascend into the high range, our aperture is gonna get smaller, and that allows the pitch to continue to vibrate as we buzz, and with faster air, that gives support to that form, allowing it all to work together. If all three of these elements are working together, that is the tongue raising, the aperture tightening, and the air speeding up, high range is pretty achievable and happens quite naturally. When you hear people talk about the idea that playing in the high range is quite easy, this is what they're referring to. The difficulty comes in mastering how these elements work together and making that feel natural. Some of these exercises we're about to discuss will probably help you with that. Let's get started. The first thing that we can do to help work on our high range playing is that we can play softly and we can sustain and we can use that paradigm for some scales. I'm gonna start with a chromatic scale starting in B flat and I'm gonna slowly raise back and forth. Notice that I'm not using any tongue, my tongue is completely out of the way and I'm making sure that I'm sustaining the buzz above everything else. I'm not playing very loud, I'm just playing enough to make sure that the sound is constant. I really tried to remember how easy the first note felt. I didn't want any pressure anywhere, I just wanted focus, and I was trying to focus constantly. One of the biggest advantages to playing like this, that is doing these slowly and softly, is that it gives your tongue and 
your airspeed and your aperture time to adjust together and slowly. Think of these as repetitions for a weightlifter on a bench. You're slowly ascending and descending and giving all the muscles time to work together and get used to responding to each other. Doing this really slowly every day for a couple weeks will build great success for you. Now that we've done some really slow scales in the upper register with no tongue and a nice quiet sustain, I like to move to some glissando. Now when we do a glissando on the trombone, it's important that we don't use any tongue, we keep the air moving constantly, and we really focus on trying to stay relaxed in our aperture's tension, but we want our corners to be engaged. I also like to think about my support when I do this, it really helps. Let's push these into our high register, but don't continue doing them until you start messing up. Make sure that you're growing your high range healthily and slowly, succeeding every day. It's okay that I can't play higher than that, because I'll get there eventually. As long as I follow this process slowly, I notice that every day it gets a little easier. Let's go on to the next exercise. If you have any friends that play the French horn, you might be familiar with these next exercises. They're called horn rips, and I like to add them into my high range routine. What we're going to do is we're going to use some alternate positions with our higher notes, and we're going to use some regular positions for our lower notes. And we're going to do a slur from a low note to a high note an octave higher. As we move the slide out, we're gonna slowly ascend with our aperture, almost like we're trying to do a slur, but we're not gonna dodge the partials in between. We're just gonna travel directly through them. It's gonna sound a little sloppy, and that's okay. You can play these at full volume, but I recommend that you first play them quietly. Again, it's not about strength, it's about focus. I'll demonstrate. Bye. Uh -huh. 
let's move on. So after those three exercises, your corners are probably pretty tired. And that's good. Remember, we're getting these muscles used to supporting a tighter aperture that allows the air to flow faster. At this point, I like to do a little bit of a cool down. And that's because it's really important to get the lactic acid out of your embouchure. Remember, your lips are muscles and they've been doing the work. For this, I like to do some really slow three note slurs and I just like to try and stay as relaxed as possible through this. I do this twice sometimes in a row, maybe even three times. At any point, when you're finished, you should feel a little tingly in your lips, and that tells you that you've worked those muscles out and then let them stretch, and you're gonna be in a great place to heal for the next day.